Hey guys, welcome to my new channel. This is going to be my first video of hopefully many about a lot of the cool creatures in the ocean, especially the deep ocean. So for my first video I thought I'd talk about a really cool fish. And by cool I mean kind of creepy. I'm talking about the common black devil, otherwise known as the humpback anglerfish. And here let me show you a lovely picture of it. Yeah, it's, it's very friendly. Kind of reminds me of that uh, movie that came out a while ago. It was called Shark Tales, where all the little sharks were like, Oh, fish, fish are friends, not food. No, I don't think this fish will be saying that. Well, back to seriousness. This anglerfish is only one of about 200 species of anglerfish, so there are tons of other lovely fish like this in the deep sea. Actually, these fish can live about as deep as 6,600 feet, so they're under a lot of pressure. In the very deep, there's very little light, so they have very tiny eyes. I suppose that they actually can't see very well. And that little kind of floppy light thing you see on top of it, that is kind of looks like a light bulb. It's not a result of reflected light. It's producing its own light. It's a light producing organ called a photophore. The reason it's called humpback is because this angler fish, if you notice, kind of has this this round shape to it. it has this elongated spine. The spine helps support its little lure which is actually what this light producing organ is used for to lure fish. It kind of like you go out fishing you have this little lure to attract other fish. Well we didn't invent fishing first. These deep sea fish did. They had it down way before us. Now the light is produced through a chemical process called bioluminescence. And this fish is actually, because of its kind of round shape, it's not very mobile. So when it swims, it kind of looks like this little wobbles going on. It just wobbles back and forth. So it's actually very still. It kind of drifts through the water. The little lure kind of eerily goes back and forth to attract other fish for its prey. Now as you can see, it has this huge mouth and these very, very sharp teeth. If the picture is kind of deceiving because it appears as this huge fish, but actually the picture happens to be of a female anglerfish, and they're, they only grow to about seven inches long, so they're actually quite tiny, but yeah, from the picture it looks like it's this huge fish, but it's just a scary little mini fish. Its color is kind of brown to dark gray to black, and kind of matches its personality, very dark. But its skin uh, is adapted to reflect blue light, so it, in, especially in the dark deep, it can seem almost invisible, even though many other animals in the deep, many other animals, use bioluminescence. So when its prey gets close, let's say it's a little squid swimming along, and it sees its lure going back and forth, back and forth, and it thinks, oh, oh look, there's a tiny organism that I can easily eat <laughs> behind this much larger organism, or at least to the squid it's larger to us, it's just a tiny little fish. So this little squid comes closer, thinks it's going to get a nice little meal, and the angler is sensing it, and then BAM! It just swallows it whole with its very large mouth and teeth. And the prey can't escape because the sharp teeth of the angler are kind of angled inward so it can keep its prey trapped better. The ultimate gulping, killing machine. Now, another creepy thing about the anglerfish is it's... It kind of reminds me of a snake in the way it eats its prey. Not only does it gulp them whole, but it can also extend its jaw and its stomach to an incredible size. So therefore it can swallow prey twice the size of its body. Although it can swallow prey twice the size of itself, if it's too large, 
it can kill the anglerfish. Kind of like that snake that tried to eat a centipede that was too big for it, and this centipede clawed its way out of the snake. You can look that up. Now, I've just been showing you pictures of the female humpback anglerfish, but, however, the male anglerfish is a lot different. It's, instead of the seven inches of the female, it's, it's about an inch big. Just a tiny little male fish. It has a really strange way of reproducing. I'll let you see it here. See, very, very tiny. Completely different looking fish. Almost cute, unlike the female. Until you hear, you'll get it in a minute. So this little male angler is in the deep ocean. And the deep ocean is so vast, it's hard to find a mate. The little male anglerfish has extremely well-developed olfactory organs. It's able to find the females because these organs are able to detect their sexual pheromones at quite long distances. So when a male angler matures, its digestive system just starts to degenerate. Then it's almost impossible for it to feed on its own. The male actually has hooks on its snout. It uses to go up to the female and then it grasps onto her. So it has to mate with the female, otherwise it'll die of starvation. Once he bites into her skin, he releases an enzyme from his mouth that dissolves the skin of his mouth and that of the female body. This causes them to become fused together and then their blood vessels join as one. Then this lucky little guy gets to spend the rest of his life joined to this female angler while getting all his nourishment from her body. This adaptation provides a continuous supply of sperm to the female so she can reproduce. I'm just, in the back of my mind, I'm just thinking, what if humans were like this? Don't imagine that. Okay, you can, but I, I think, I think we would just stop reproducing and probably die off if, if that was the case, because... God attached to my stomach for the rest of my life. I mean, it would be uncomfortable for me and definitely the guy. And then when the female does get pregnant, she lays her eggs in this kind of gel gelatinous sheet. The sheet is about two or three feet wide and about 30 feet long. And then this little sheet, it just floats free in to the sea until the eggs hatch into larvae. Then the little, little larvae swim to the surface and feed on plankton until they mature. and Then go down to the deep and the process a lovely reproduction continues. I sound kind of disgusted by these fish, but I actually think it's really cool. And I mean, what better way to inherently survive than just attaching yourself to a female? Now you would think that these creepy little fish, or should I say, cool little fish, wouldn't be at risk because of their appearance, but they actually are a fish commercially throughout the world. Apparently they're compared to lobster in taste and texture. I don't know about you, but I personally have not tasted an angler fish. I don't really plan to. And apparently in, in Japan, these fish are considered a delicacy and are really high priced. So put that on your list if you plan on going to Japan. Go try their anglerfish. That's about all I have to say about the humpback anglerfish. I hope you enjoyed my spiel. I hope I made you more interested into looking up more information about the anglerfish. And just in case, I provided some links below. And now that I planted some creepy images for nightmares in your head, I'm going to bid you adieu. Feel free to like this video, subscribe. Any comments or questions, feel free to put them below. Bye.